Hi, my name is Judy, and I am a math educator from Colorado. I'm Betty, a mathematics educator from South Carolina. We're going to explore transformations of a quadratic function. This activity is from Math Inspired. You can locate it at education.ti.com under the Math Inspired Activities. The activity is called Transformations of a Quadratic Function, and we'll explore several of those transformations. First, let's review the parent function, f of x equals x squared, and look at some characteristics of the parent function. This is a graph of f of x equals to x squared, and you can see multiple points were placed on the graph and a continuous curve was drawn. To graph this, you may have originally set up a t-chart and just picked some x values, squared those values, and graphed the xy results. Notice with negative 2, we place negative 2 in parentheses and square it, the result is 4. You can always use decimal values as well. In this case, 1.5 squared is 2.25. So any real number can be chosen for x. The square of that number is the function value, f of x, at that x value. When we consider the domain and range of this function, remember we could use any x value for x. So the domain is x is an element of the real numbers. Since these x values are being squared, with one exception, all of the range values are positive. But zero squared, of course, is zero. So our range is y is greater than or equal to zero. The vertex of this parabola, which opens up, is the lowest value on the graph, the lowest point on the graph, and the coordinates are zero, zero. If the axis of symmetry of a parabola is a vertical line, it divides the parabola in half also a vertical line in the form x equal to the x value of the vertex. In this case, x is equal to zero. So now we're going to think about what happens if this parent function is changed. In the transformations activity on page 1.2, you'll see the graph of the parent function when a is equal to 1, since of course that's f of x is equal to 1 times x squared. Let's change the values of a and consider how those changes affect the graph of this function. If a is increased or decreased. And when you get to a is equal to zero, it will remind you that a cannot be equal to zero for the quadratic function, since that would have resulted in the line f of x is equal to zero. So a could be negative or positive, but not equal to zero. Let's pose a couple of questions for you related to the changes in the value of a. So as Judy is changing these values, consider what do you observe about the vertex of each of the parabolas as the value of a is changed? And how does the value of a affect whether the graph of the quadratic function opens up or down? So we're going to give you a few moments to think about this. Please pause the video and write down your observations about each of these questions. You may have observed when these parabolas were graphed with the different values of a, the vertex did not change. In the example here where a is negative, the vertex is still at zero, zero. When the value of a is increased, then we see that the vertex of those graphs are still located at 0, 0. You may also have noticed that when a is negative, the parabola opens down. But when a is positive, since we're squaring values and then multiplying by a positive value, the function values are always positive in this case, except, of course, at the vertex. So again, we're squaring values, the result is positive, except at the vertex. And in this case, as shown on the left, when you multiply by a positive value, all of the y values except at the vertex are positive. Let's consider a third question about the transformation 
when we change A. How does the value of A, the changes in these values of A, affect the shape of the graph? So again, Judy will change the values of A so that you can observe various values. Think about what is happening as these values of A are changed. She has some positive values there. These are now decreasing. And remember, we're thinking about what happens to the graph compared to the parent function. So please pause the video for about five seconds or so so that you'll have a chance to jot down a quick observation about what happens to the shape of the graph when the value of A is changed. You may have observed that clearly the graphs were different when the A va values were very large or very small. Let's look at a summary of this. When the absolute value of A is greater than 1, it appeared that these graphs became more narrow. What is happening is, of course, that you're multiplying by a larger number, which makes the function values greater, either positively or negatively, which results in this vertical stretch. So if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, it's a vertical stretch. But if the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1, you're multiplying in that case. Let's look at one of those. For example, right here, you're multiplying by smaller values than 1. So once x is squared in this example, then multiplied by 4 tenths. The graph is wider because the y values are not increasing as rapidly as they would have for larger A values. We can summarize this in another way by looking at several graphs that have different A values. In this particular example, we see the parent function f of x equals to x squared, and we also see f of x is equal to 5.8 times x squared. In this case, when x is 1, for example, instead of the result of 1 in the parent function, function value for f of x equals to 5.8 times x squared would be actually 1 times 5.8. We have a stretch because we have the vertical stretch in this case because the graph the function values are increasing more rapidly. So the graph is steeper. Let's consider what would happen in f2 of x if the coefficient a value were between 0 and 1. So Judy's going to edit f2 of x and we'll change the 5.8 value to 2 tenths. Notice in this case there's a vertical compression. The y values are not increasing as rapidly as they were before because after the x values are squared, in this case, they're multi being multiplied by 2 tenths rather than by 1 in the parent function. What would happen, though, if this a value were negative? Let's edit the parent function so that the a value is exactly the same as in F2, except that it's a negative value, negative 2 tenths. So in this case, you see that the shape of the graphs are the same, but one is a reflection about the x-axis of the other graph. So our summary again, if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, we see a vertical stretch. If the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1, we have a vertical compression. The values did not increase as rapidly. Let's now consider another transformation. In the TI Inspire activity document, we're now going to consider an A value of 1, but changes in the value of C and the function f of x equals to x squared plus C. So when C is equal to 0, we have our parent function, f of x equals to x squared. So let's look at some changes in the values of C and let you think about what is happening to the graph of this particular function when C increases or decreases. 
and as these values are changed, consider these two questions. What do you observe about the vertex as the value of C is increased or decreased? And how does the value of C actually affect the graph? Pause the video and jot down your observations about these two questions. You may have noted that this time the vertex of the parabola did change, though the x value of the parabola is still zero. But compared to the parent function, the y value of the vertex is different, except when c is equal to zero. In the example shown right now, the vertex is at zero, negative four, so the vertex from the parent function has been shifted down four units with the x value the same. And in this same way, we could say that the value of C moved the graph vertically, translated the graph vertically, C units. So when C is positive, the graph is moved upward, translated. And when the C value is negative, the graph is translated downward. We're going to give you a challenge now to put together these changes in these parameters and think about this function, f of x equals 3x squared minus 2. Clearly the a value is different than for the parent function, as is the c value. So if you will, this is your challenge, describe this graph. What would this graph look like? You may also wish to do a sketch of the graph. For other videos, go to the TI Education YouTube channel.